Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series and many of you by now will have noticed a pretty significant gap in the regular scheduling. If you're not a fan of my Facebook page and you missed the regular updates I put out it's because I'm having some work done on my house at the moment and uh, as much as I would love to force tradesmen to work around me in complete silence while they listen to me prattle on about Subcom. I'm sure you can appreciate the practicalities of that aren't exactly sensible. Uh, so I will get them out as and when I can as well before we roll out with this afternoon's action I just want to mention many of you still wondering how to send in replays to me I have mentioned it many times before and <laughs> someone clearly said to me the other day perhaps I should have a regular thing in the description to the videos and uh, then maybe they can be directed direct straight to that. So, for a little bit of clarification once again, if you want to send in a replay, you just send in to me the replay ID. Just send that in a mail or whatever and uh, I can do the rest. I'll contact you if for some reason the replay vault spazzes out and I can't get my hands on it, but otherwise the replay ID is fine. If you're not sure how to find the replay ID, you just look at your replay in the local archive in FAF, right click on it and go show in Explorer, that will bring up Windows Explorer and uh, the highlighted file will have a number on its name, that is the replay ID, that's all I need, you can send that to me and I can do the rest and if I haven't put that in the description to this video please yell at me and I will get that on my default setting so it pops up every time. Anyway on to today's game it is going to be a ladder match it's going to take place on Eye of the Storm so let's get on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. Love me some Eye of the Storm. Don't see enough of it for some reason even though it's on a ladder but does make for some entertaining games. So let's take a look at our players down here at the bottom right hand side of your screen in the red corner it's Black Death He's going Cybrin opening first land and his opponent up here at the top left in the blue corner my good friend and fellow caster TA for life back to his ever so customary Aeon he did have a slight brain injury and experimented with Cybrin for a bit but it's nice to see he's back playing his uh, customary race always good to see and he's also opening first land we'll take a look at what he's producing here straight off the, uh, the first run of the production line and it is three engineers that's all pretty standard you wouldn't expect to see any uh, lab play it's quite difficult to get over to your opponent's side of the map and harass however we said that black death on a very early mantis on this one we'll take a look at where he's sending this little chap it's going right up here to this peninsula it's gonna lie in wait for an engineer and hopefully uh, pick that up and uh, another mantis as well looking to cover the other peninsula on this side, one further over, not the uh, the next one over that creates the, the kind of harbour shell, but uh, the next one further up. So Black Death looking to be a little bit aggressive here, always nice to see. We've got a couple of spirits out from TA and an engineer that's going across the water, also an Aurora. He's planning to make a grab for the middle, lots of mass of course to recycle in there he's also going to go throw down a land factory so this is a real grab land factory radar and uh, seeker anti-air static anti-air in the middle so that is a real push for the middle that's uh, nice uh, work from TA that mantis rounding that corner now and making its way up but I don't think it's going to have any success because uh, it's more than likely going to run headfirst into TA for life's ACU which is coming down south of his main base and that means we're going to have an ACU on ACU battle over the bottom left hand corner because it does look like Black Death has also picked that corner for his ACU so it's going to be ACU wars down at the bottom left hand corner over the south western starting location and it's going to be general T1 spam wars more than likely over the top right we'll see how even these guys are in uh, their approach to it they're pretty even at the moment well actually mass fluctuating for TA I'm guessing he's bottlenecking on power yes he is but uh, I think uh, when that levels out when TA gets his power sorted we'll see that they're probably more than likely neck and neck little bit of an interceptor fracar going on down here above Black Death's commander Black Death actually looking to get the better of it slightly right up until uh, I mentioned it of course and then TA pulls out a, a kill out of the bag but that is the curse of the commentator and uh, that Mantis was redirected was heading for this peninsula and now is going straight after 
the Harbour Shell Peninsula and picks up an engineer, a radar. Will he get through the mass extractor is the question. He's taking some fire from back here. Aurora on the station, not going to be able to grab that. And that Aurora saves the mechs. Black Death now aware of what's going on in the middle and manages to knock out that engineer that was working on that seeker there. But there are two more available to pick up where he left off. There's now also uh, Inceptor out from TA managing to knock out that bomber. Very early naval factory as well for TA. Six minutes in, he has his first naval units on the field and uh, beelining straight over towards Black Death's Harbor. He's already got an Aurora sitting in there, lurking, looking for engineers, building naval factories, and it's such a key map, of course, for water. If you can get naval supremacy on this one, you're in a very strong position indeed, and that looks like TA might just have grabbed the initiative on that one. Frigate, a beacon-class frigate, making its way into the harbor area now, Black Death. And uh, he'll be working out that there are no engineers working on naval factories at the moment. So that could be a little bit tricky. TA for life grabbing the initiative in the middle. Both guys setting up shop down here. TA for life gone straight for an eruptor. So P def uh, PD point defense in place. And the land factory going up behind it. Black Death has his land factory in place as well. So it looks a little bit like it might be a stalemate for a while there. However... Black Death does seem to have had the advantage at the top right, the northeastern corner of the map. A ton of Mantis pushing forward. And uh, because of the line, the face that he's presenting, these Auroras coming in single file one at a time are going to fare even worse than usual. Not making use of their ranged advantage, of course, and that's going to allow Black Death to snag the top right all he needs to do is send some engines up there he is putting together a little manufacturing facility little fa manufacturing base further down actually he's going to get that operational first and then take it up a little drops emerging now i think from black death you can see him just loading up six mantis there onto a skyhook and continuing to push forward up here with this merry band of chappies takes down one mechs chasing down a couple of engineers onto the edge of the peninsula as well. Should also manage to snag this mechs down here. And that goes some way to leveling it slightly. Black Death looking like he's slightly behind on Commander mass at this attack. point. You can hear a little bit of action going on down here though. And he's doing reasonably well. TA for life knocked down to under 6,000 HP on the con. Black Death goes into the yellow as well. But 7,200 hit points on him. Looking much better. He's going to continue to advance forward and snag some engineers as well. So Black Death looking quite strong down here at the 10 minute mark or approaching to it. The drop appears behind his commander. Goes straight for some of the mexes further back. Another drop further up as well. Snags another two mass points. That really does level things in mass terms between these two. Black Death just needs to snag the top right corner. He's got a bunch of build capacity heading there now to do that. And he should be on top in terms of mass despite TA sitting on the middle. TA does have the odd unit of build capacity ready to pick up these other mexes that he's just lost. Black Death continuing to press on the outlying reaches of TA's base. I think TA's probably going to have enough support there to stop this little push. No problems there for him whatsoever. It's going to be three factories facing three factories in a moment. TA looking to grab the mexes though in the meantime. Might not be able to hold on to them for too long. But that is of course six mass per tick off the T1s that he's got coming in for next to no outlay. So it's always worth grabbing it. Now these uh, Medusas are going to allow Black Death to range these units a little bit. If you can get the Medusas in and knock down this Eruptor, it could really open things up 
for him down here, allow him to pressure these three manufacturing plants. And Eruptor going up a little bit further back as well. He's been unsuccessful, that little push. Hasn't managed to gain anything, but uh, Black Death has managed to throw together a naval factory. But TA for Life throwing up two more just outside Black Death's harbour. So that's three naval factories to one. It's all a question of how much TA for Life is devoting to the Navy with everything else going on. I still think he wants to commit to that. He's in a pretty good spot to Black Death looking like he wants to push out though. Five slivers and two tridents. Looking pretty good at the moment. TA for Life trying to cobble together a tide, a T1 torpedo launcher for Aeon there. Needs to get that online. Doesn't want Black Death to break out of here and threaten these two naval yards. If he takes those down, that will give him an advantage in the sea and then also threaten this middle base, which has been what's keeping TA for Life in play. Now TA pressing a little bit. Black Death's managed to throw together an auto gun. And he's also made the transition to T2 engineering suite on his commander as well. And he's going to throw together a Cerberus turret a little bit further back. And that will mark the end of this little push. It's going straight for TA's commander. Already on low health. It's going to be faring even worse at the end of this barrage. 4,000 hit points just over on the clock as he submerges into the bay. But Black Death looking like he's here to stay in the northeastern corner. Lots of Mantis present. A couple of auto guns in place. Throwing up an anti-air turret further back because of the presence of that bomber, I guess, down there at the southwestern corner. And now we've got a little bit of a point defense creep going on for Black Death. Eruptor opens up on the ACU first and then switches to the T1 as it allowed Black Death enough time to get the Cerberus turret online. There goes the Eruptor. I uh, think it's not looking great for TA down here at the southwest. However, he has thrown together an upgrade. He's got his T2 Land Factory HQ on the front line there. That should allow him access to some T2 units and uh, he's gone straight for engineers actually so he's going to return the favor and go for point defense for the moment but of course that uh, benefit of going for the land factory HQ and not the commander building suite yes it's a little bit less instant build power but he gets access of course to all the other units potentially some mobile shield gens and the like a little bit of a drop coming in here from TA. It's build capacity that he's gone for. And he's throwing up point defense straight away. And then changes his mind. Cancels that build queue. Looked like there were a couple of seekers in there as well. TA's managed to fend off the previous little naval attack. But we have got a transition to T2 for Black Death. This time on the air he's got a renegade in play gonna go straight after the build capacity but we've also got t2 now running in the air for ta who turns up with a swift wind manages to take down that renegade and save at least three units of build capacity there you can see the air factory hq in the middle there for black death so black death lagging behind a little bit renegades working well though up at the northeast helping to keep TA for life's reinforcements at bay. It's a good thing too because he's lost his two auto guns at the perimeter of the northeastern starting position. In come the wave of inties for Black Death. Considerable amount of air power he's got at the moment and a transition to T2 Tech, the Navy for Black Death as well. And that means he's now out teching TA on Navy. We're starting to see Barracudas in play. Question is, does he have enough firepower now to breach this little blockade? That one tide is rather annoying. There's another one coming up as well next to it. Renegades caught a whole bunch of build capacity there 
for TA napping. And now I'm going to go after some of these mexes and Black Death actually ahead on mass. However, he's been breached up at the northeastern starting position. He's going to lose all four of these mexes. Another eight mass per tick that he's going to lose. In come a couple of Corsairs. It's not going to be enough to save those mexes though. Should be able to finish up this merry band of T1. More incoming all the time, though. Swift winds piling up back here for TA. And Renegade's continuing to push. Takes down another mex right at the edge of TA's base. Swift winds going after the Renegades, but uh, not getting them in time to save the mexes. Of course, this horde of interceptors, whilst taking ground fire, they don't want to sit there taking it for too long but they have managed to deal with the swift winds to date but now all swift winds coming out all the time and a lot of ground fire means that black death stands to lose almost all of these inties that's handing air control over to ta potentially and this is what i mean the advantage it's given him he's got a asylum and an even song now and it's allowed him to range the Cerberus turrets. You can see the Rex down here. And uh, in reaction to that, Black Death has thrown up a couple of Zappers. 21 minutes gone in this game, but an awful lot of reaction. A Salem now on the field to join that Barracuda. And that's giving him the range that he needs to deal with that naval factory. There it goes. That is a nasty blow there for TA, but he's still doing all right on mass. He's teching up his base extractors nicely. 53 mass per tick to 37. We'll see what things are like on the reclaim front. 22.5k banked for TA and just 5k or just under 5k banked for Black Death. So that's what's really making the difference in this game so far. Ton of reclaim going towards TA. And despite the fact that uh, the mass has been relatively even throughout this one, it's allowed him to pull ahead in the mass game. Very cheeky beachhead he's managed to put together here. You can see the two land factories over here at the eastern edge, and that's really cut off reinforcements from the top. This has been a drop up here. It's allowed him to clean out this northeastern position but he's now facing tech deficit we've got blazes on the field they should be able to deal with that and as those last few units peter out that represents the last of the units however another drop coming in this time it's engineers he really needs to get some land factories in play or something he's trying to break through on this eastern set of land but uh, it's really not working for him he has however managed to break out with this little band of navy he's got Salem Siren Barracuda and a mermaid and he's actually making his way down here to the southeastern corner Could potentially cause some problems if he sticks around he can clear this out could really get back into this he's definitely not looking good though at the northeastern edge 14 mass per tick differential between these two in favor of ta and ta is about to increase that i think he should be able to hold on to that for now there's going to be no more land coming up this way for the foreseeable future renegades working on breaking through this little it's not really a fire base but little manufacturing facility Swift Wind's coming in to deal with them, though. Black Death actually pushing out with his commander. Even things up slightly if he could knock the middle out of commission. You can see the Navy putting some fire, working on taking down some of these units of PD. There goes one of the Oblivion turrets. songs not present in great number but the asylums are going some way to mitigate this damage and TA for life's ACU actually going for a wander as well 
heading straight for the top corner, so he's going to secure this with his commander. He's left the bottom left-hand corner. Both of them abandoning that. Interesting how that's evolving. It's amazing how tanky a position can come with mobile shield generators, but slowly picking off the odd unit. All of those units of Oblivion turrets have gone down except for this one over here. You could take down that HQ factory. That could be quite the coup, but in comes a couple of Exodus class destroyers equipped with their own asylums and that's going to be the end of this little naval bombardment. You can see one of the Barracudas going down there. Another one following it up. Corsairs come in to try and relieve the pressure, but there's floating flak in the area ascendant, so they don't get a second pass. And things actually looking really bad for Black Death now. So on the middle, he's managed to capture TA for Life's land factory there. He can allow that to do the rest to knock out the rest of those mexes. If he wants to get his comm to safety, he doesn't really want to get caught on this central island with this growing navy coming in but look at this T2 and T1 push right on the fringe of Black Death's base who really is down to around about 15% of the map now if you count the water as well not looking ideal this little p peninsula is next on the chopping block And Black Death actually taking an awful lot of fire as he tries to get back to the bottom right-hand corner. I think TA has managed to grab him here. Oh, and down he goes. Doesn't make it back. I think we could say with a certainty that uh, even if he'd have gone to the middle with a T2 transport and brought his comm back a little bit earlier, he still wasn't going to emerge victorious out of that one. There was no tech down here at the bottom left-hand corner for... Black Death and uh, despite losing everything down here it didn't look like he was in danger of breaking through top right was lost so really I think TA for Life had won that 29 minutes though a little bit of a short one hope you enjoyed it as always guys more to come from me in the future if at a slightly erratic pace uh, in the meantime though stay well and stay safe this is Guile signing out